Good evening, y'all. Welcome back to Pure South Pastures. Tonight I'm out here uh, <clears throat> walking in a, a rented pasture, the pasture that we have leased. Just hang out with me tonight. Let me just share some tips on uh, choosing which breed or what kind of cow to, to purchase or what you look for when you're buying new cows. Um, and maybe you're just getting started and trying to figure out what to do. Uh, just want to talk about that for a little while tonight. By the way, check this out. New hats. Nice, huh? New hat. Pure South Pastures. Glad you're here with me. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hang out for just a little while. I'll show you some, some cattle. We'll talk about why we bought the ones we did and uh, maybe help you along the way a little bit. Man, look at this pasture. A lot of... This is um, dog fennel, and it is probably a sign of poor fertility when you have dog fennel in your pasture. Definitely not, um, it's definitely not what you want, but it's what we have. This is a leased pasture. This is our first year to lease it. And I've got the cows in here pretty, they're not tightened down because it's just so poor. Um, and it is a lot of broom sedge. And so I've been letting them have a large portion of this pasture for, they've been on it the last four days. And they are, um, they're just picking through, going through the broom sedge, picking what they can down, down low and uh, taking that stuff. So I, I was out here tonight and I was thinking about, so grateful for the cattle that we have. I love where we're going with our herd and, um, and this is what I'm talking about right here. And I just love that animal. She is just something else. She's something uh, something is crazy. Look, she got a bobtail. Not exactly sure what happened. I'm not sure if that's a fescue issue um, from fescue toxicity or if she got stepped on and pulled the hair out. But it hadn't grown back for a while. So anyway, kind of interesting. I don't know that it's always been that way. Here's some of the little the new calves that we have. And they're, they really are looking good. Um, of course, all calves seem to look good. But then they're growing up into animals that look like this. this little, little bull. I just uh, took a, another bull to another farm, sold him. Last week we sold a, a heifer, a heifer calf with a, a young cow, a little two-year-old cow. So we've moved some animals off the farm. And then our other little bull over here, this 21 bull, he's going to another farm um, probably in the next week. He's the, he's the one, this one right here. He's going to another farm. Just, he's a good-looking little bull. Little yearling bull, so um, obviously he's pretty small, but uh, he's gonna get the job done. So, some things that I would think about if I were buying cattle. First of all, the first thing I would say is you need to know what your what are your goals, uh, what are you trying to accomplish. Um, you know, if if uh, if you just want to do cow calf, or if you're gonna try to raise meat. Um, if you're going to do grain fed, grass fed, if you're going to, you know, are you, what are your uh, values? I mean, do you want to uh, just do grass only? Are you trying to, to keep low inputs? Are you going to feed grain? All of those questions have to be asked, I think, on the front end. And maybe you say, well, I don't know. I, I've never done it. So, I, you know, I have to kind of figure it out as I go. I think you need to try to, to do some research and just figure out some of those things as before you actually purchase because that would a lot would depend on a lot hinges on um, what your plans are for your animals and so how much like ground do you have how much access do you have to to pasture um, so what are your end goals so for us we're actually doing cow calf operation as well as uh, finishing some for meat and that's probably the hardest thing to do if I had it to do over again and I was starting all over again I would probably begin very first, I would probably begin with um, just some cattle to feed out, keep them through, get them in the spring, keep them through the fall, um, and then sell them or 
or uh, buy them at a weight when you could process them uh, in the fall and sell the meat. Um, then you don't have to carry them through the winter. Your greatest exp expense in cattle is your winter feed. And so for us, it's hay. We buy hay. Uh, we don't put up any hay. So that's, uh, that's just, if I were starting over again, starting brand new, that's what I would do. And we may next year, um, we may buy some, some animals that we can finish um, and just bring them in for the, the summer or for a year and, and finish them here. So that's the first thing you got to think about. What, what are your goals and uh, where are you wanting to go with your operation? And then a lot of the other decisions that you'll have to make as you're purchasing animals will hinge on that, will depend on that. So that's number one. One of the things a lot of people concentrate on is breed. Um, and I, I would say there's, there's a lot to be thought about there. Um, but really, if you're not going to go uh, like a registered herd, then I don't think breed is such a... It's such a big deal in the sense of trying to get a like a a, a pure line uh, specific breed. Um, that's not what we did, although we were specific about the breeds that we brought on, and, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. But the second tip I would give when you're buying cattle is a lot of people are really concerned with breed, and there is a lot uh, to think about when you're thinking about what animals you're going to bring on your farm. But unless you're going to go with a registered herd and making sure that you have all the paperwork and all of that, which a lot of people aren't doing that, then I wouldn't be so concerned with, is it a pure blooded animal? Is it, does it have, you know, is it a registered bull? Is it a registered cow? Um, for most of us, uh, that's, that's not so much to be worried about. And so um, we were very specific when we brought animals on our farm about the kind that we, we purchased, but more than breed there were some other things that we were thinking about now when we purchased our bull we specifically purchased uh, a bull from a bull from greg judy and he is a pure uh pure blood south pole bull he doesn't have papers because greg doesn't keep papers um but we wanted the the characteristics of of that animal or the or the the, the south pole breed and so because of that uh that's why we purchased that bull um but the cows that we have, uh, none of them are purebred, uh, pure blood. Um, we have some cows that are influenced by Devon, but they're just commercial cows. We have some in cows that are influenced by um, Red Angus, mostly Red Angus, but none of them are registered or anything. So it was the, the combination of the bull that we knew we wanted the genetics from with good, solid cows but that aren't going to break the bank. So our cows, none of our cows are super expensive cows, but they all came from a bloodline of grass only, no grain, not a lot of props, not a lot of inputs, not uh, regular, uh, you know, this might make some people, throw some people off, but there was no regular routine of shots. You know, if, if a cow gets sick, then we'll administer something to help it uh, stay well. But if a cow continually gets sick, it doesn't stay on the farm. And so we're trying to raise animals that it's not going to take a lot of inputs. If you've had many cattle at all, the margins are slim. And so the more of the inputs that you can cut out, uh, the more you can um, just keep them on grass and water and mineral and make it go that way, um, your, your bottom line is going to be a lot better. So um, that's what I would encourage you. It's not always about the breed, although breed can have a, a lot of influence in the decisions that you make. It's not always about the breed but maybe about some other things. So when I'm thinking about the cattle that I wanted here, I wanted cattle that were grass genetic. In other words, they had been years and years and years on staying fat on grass only. Um, I wanted cattle that had a certain um, frame size, body type build. I wanted a, a smaller animal, 900 to 1,000 pound cow. Um, we wanted cattle with a, a big belly, big gut. Uh, they're, they're able to take in lots of grass. And because of their smaller frame and their big belly, their fermentation tank, they're able to, to process that grass and keep weight on uh, in the toughest of conditions. Listen, right now, we're, man, we're in the middle of a drought. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not as bad as it was last year, but it is dry, super dry. And there's, not a lot of, there's just not a lot of great forage for these animals to eat. They're out here wading around in broom sedge and weeds, and they're picking through. And, and I mean, look at this cow behind me. I mean, she's just... She's keeping condition on. Look at, 
Look at this cow right here. I mean, look at her. She's out here eating subpar forage. Sorry about the camera work. And she's keeping condition on. In our area of Arkansas, most of the forage that we have, at least on our farm, is warm season grass. And um, it's not going to stockpile very well. Um, and it just, you know, after 20, 30, 40 days, it's, uh, it's nutrition's going down. And so we need these animals to be able to take subpar forage and put weight on with it and, and, uh, and do well. So I hear somebody sneaking up on me here. Listen, this, I'm going to flip the camera around. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is a young heifer. She's just awesome. And uh, I'm so, so happy about, uh, I'm so, so happy about the animals that these calves, uh, this combination of bull and cows are producing. I mean, look at her temperament. Look at her. She's just an incredible animal. She comes out here every time I come out. She does this. She wants to lick on my hand. <laughs> Look at something. Gentle cows sure do make things easier. Yeah, I love it. The third thing I would say if I were buying animals is I would want to have animals that are gentle, docile. You just saw that cow, that little heifer calf uh, licking on my hand. Um, part of docility or gentleness in an animal is just from being around you. So if, if you never go out with your cows, if you just turn them out, and leave them out there all year and go out there every now and then, then um, they're probably not going to be real gentle. They're probably not going to be, you could just come to you and want to be close. Um, and I don't necessarily want them to be close, but I'm just saying that they're not going to run off when I, I mean, I can't stand going out in the pasture and, and an animal just throw its head up and take off running as far as it can from you. I mean, you're talking about hard to work with and hard to handle. That's tough. But um, when you have animals that you're around all the time, they just get used to you being there and they don't even think anything about it. And this guy, He's super gentle, um, but look, she she's not a real touchy cow. She don't want me touching her, but she's not going to go far. You know, she's just right there, and this this cow's not a touchy cow. She don't want me being too close, but she's not just bolting and running. And so when it comes time to, however they act in this environment, when it comes time to putting them in a, a corral and working them, um, they're going to take it, you know, I'm talking about 10, 20, 30, 40 times higher in intensity. And so... Some of our red Angus cows, they get a little, they get a little intense in, in the corral. They're great out here. Uh, this cow right here, she's, she's not going to let me get too close to her, but she's great out here. Um, just a good animal. Throws a great calf. I'm telling you, you get her in a pen, she'll, uh, you don't want to get too close to it. She, she'll get intense. So you can see she's, she's always going to be looking. She's not going to let me get too close. But she's not going to bolt and run. She's just going to... That's how you want a cow right there. She's gentle. She's not going crazy. But she's also... Um, you know, she's not throwing her head up and running across the, the pasture. So Some of these animals, are, they are too gentle. I mean, we're with them all the time. So um, A lot of people, make, that makes them uncomfortable because they are animals and you never know what they're going to do. That's just the reality of it. So yeah, I would consider docility... So that's one of the things about buying a sale barn. I'm not against sale barns, and, and uh, I will be purchasing some animals at a sale barn at some point, I'm sure. At this point, I haven't done that. But that's one of the things about buying from a sale barn. You just There's a lot of things you can't tell. And maybe um, before they come in the ring, or maybe even in the ring, you can tell. But sometimes back in the back, you know, when you're in the catwalk, you can kind of just watch an animal, see how it's acting in the pen, and get a feel for um, how it is. But there's, there's a lot of things to look at. One of the things I'd be looking at is docility if I was buying an animal. There's another one of our red, red Angus cows. She's a, probably the most prolific 
um, producer, calf producer we have. She's she's awesome. She's not my favorite cow, but she sure is a good mama. She's a good one. Grateful to have her. The next thing I would think about um, if I was going to be purchasing cattle is whether if the animals have been um, broken to electric fence or not. So for us, our home farm has um, electric fence all the way around it. Our adjoining leases that, that are next to us and our new farm in the back, they only have barbed wire fence, but we use um, poly wire on reels and um, solar chargers, portable sol solar chargers when we go on those farms. So that's how we move them every day and that's how we keep them in the area that we want them to be in. So if you bring in animals on your farm and they're not, they haven't been hot wire broke, you're gonna have to have a place to do that um, when you bring them on. And really you need a, anytime you bring animals on your property, um, it would be my advice to uh, put them up in a secure area first um, before just releasing them out in the pasture because that can, uh, it could go fine, but it could go crazy too. I mean, it could be, a, it's good to let them settle down a little bit because they could just bolt through a fence and, and be gone. Uh, you just never know what they're going to do. So again, that goes with the docility of animals, but even a, even a gentle animal, uh, even a gentle cow or, or a bull, when you bring them on and they're, you know, they're just scared and their adrenaline's pumping, they could do some crazy stuff. So, um, yeah, if they're not hot wire broke, if they're not electric fence broke, then you're going to have to put them somewhere where you can train them to electric fence. And, uh, that's not too hard to do. Um, just getting them somewhere where you can, uh, get them in a place where there, there's a secure fence behind it and you can set up electric fence inside and they'll get popped a few times just walking around. It didn't take them long, uh, getting hit with that electric, electric fence and they'll, they'll be trained. But that's one of the things I'd be thinking about as well. One of the last things I'll share, and, um, this one may seem really obvious. I think sometimes our, our desires get the best of us and we want to go out and buy more animals than really we have room for. Um, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely be cautious about how many you bring on at first, especially if you've never done it before, or if you're on a new piece of property or a new lease piece of property, then I would, um, I'd be careful about bringing too many. I would, uh, err on the side of caution and, and, uh, understock extremely under stock because it, you may think you know how many you can run on that piece of property or on that grass but until you get animals there you're just not going to know so i would um i definitely um under stock for what you think you, you're going to need and then you can always add animals add animals later it's a terrible feeling to feel like you're running out of grass um you can always add animals to eat more grass but just because you got a lot of grass in the spring, I mean, look at us right here. We're in September, and man, it's it's dry. We're not running out of grass, but it's definitely dry. So um, I would always caution on that side. So there you have it. My recommendation on five or so things that I would be thinking through if you're going to start a new herd or begin in begin a cattle operation and so um, there's a lot to think through it's super exciting um, you heard me say this before you know three years ago for us it was just a dream and now it's you know it's an everyday responsibility but it's fun it's a uh, it's a gift that we get to do and having new calves and being able to process amazing meat share it with our friends and um, just the the taking care of them and and watching them grow and learning all that there is it's just so much it's so much to learn so much to do and and um but it is a gift it's a it's an awesome lifestyle so um yeah i think a lot of people get hung up on breeds i think there's a lot of other things to think about and i would encourage you to do that by the way there's this idea too maybe this is another thing to think about but there is the idea of hybrid vigor so you know when you uh cross two breeds then there's this exponential effect that happens it's a kind of a, a natural phenomenon you take two breeds and it seems like 
you know, straight line breeding, one breed would be the best. But uh, often hybrid vigor by crossing two different breeds, you get a better uh, result. Uh, it's like a, a, a fresh wind in the the uh, DNA process. And so, I don't know, that's something to think about too. So, um, taking one breed and crossing it with another and, and uh, exciting things happen. Anyway, I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. Sun's going down. Uh, my son has a bunch of boys over hanging out for his birthday. They're going to, I think they're going to go back on the back of the farm and hammock camp tonight. And um, so I'm going to go hang out with them for a little bit, get some dinner. I hope you have a great weekend. Hope you have a great day whenever you're watching this. And I hope God blesses you. Uh, so good to have this online community, this YouTube community. If you know of anybody that would enjoy this content or would uh, benefit from our channel, I just encourage you to share this with them. And don't forget, as always, to like and uh, subscribe. Share comments if you have any. And uh, God bless you guys. Have a good one.